I want to show you something that you can do if you make a website, if you're a web developer, to improve the way that images load on web pages and create a much better experience for your users. Let me first show you how things have been working. I'll show you what the problem is, and I'll show you a new thing that's coming that's going to solve this problem for us if we just make sure that we set things up a certain kind of way. So let's go back in time to like 1995 or 2005 when we had websites that maybe kind of look like this, right? So here I've got an H1 headline, I've got a paragraph, an image, and a second paragraph. And I actually, for all of these, I put a border around the image itself, just so we can kind of see the image and sort of see how big the browser is trying to make the image at any given moment. So let's go over to this tab and we'll look at this uh, by itself and we'll look at how it loads. If I hit refresh, and if you look carefully, you can kind of see that the image, well, it's actually really hard to see. So let's, let's open up developer tools for a second here. And we're going to come over here to the network tab, which could be maybe anywhere, but I've put it here. Uh, and I'm in Firefox, by the way. I happen to be in Firefox 69 because it's October of 2019. Uh, and I'm going to say disable cache, which is going to make sure that the it, it reloads the image every single time, which is what we want right now to show you this demo. And I'm going to slow down the network speed to like 2G speeds. And then let's load this. So what you can see as this is loading is that that first paragraph is coming in and then the second paragraph is being painted immediately right after it on the page. And the browser sort of, it knows that it's going to put an image there, but it doesn't really know how big the image is. So it just sort of makes a zero pixel tall, zero pixel wide space for it, which would normally be invisible, but because we have this little border around it, you can kind of see this little border, this little black box shows up where the image is going to be. And it creates this kind of weird jankiness, this thing that people have been calling jank. So the solution to this back in 2005 and 1995 was to put the width and height information on the image itself so that the browser doesn't have to download the image in order to know what this information is. It can just read it straight out of the HTML. And the syntax from this, which goes way back to the early days of HTML, is to say width equals quote 750 end quote, height equals quote 500 end quote. There's no, there's no pixel here, there's no M or RAM, there's no units. It's just 750, 500. Those are the actual numbers of pixels in the image itself. This of course was back in the day before we had retina screens and stuff, so it wasn't that complicated. It was just, hey, this image is 750 by 500. Um, and that basically tells the browser how big it's going to be. So if I save this and then I refresh, you can see that it's drawing a space that's the correct size space for the image, even though the image isn't really downloaded yet. It puts the paragraph, that second paragraph, lower down where it's going to be later in the page. And then as the image loads, it goes ahead and loads the image into that space. Um, that's really cool. This is why back in the 90s and in the early 2000s, we would tell each other, hey, we should always include the white width and height attributes on any HTML image because it improves performance, especially on super slow network connections. Ever since responsive web design came along and we started resizing images with CSS, that solution no longer worked. You can see here, I've got width and height on my image attribute, but I also have here in my CSS a width of 100% and height of auto. And if we look at what this does in Firefox 69, you can see that in fact, when the image size is calculated for the first paint, it's being calculated as zero pixels tall. It knows how wide to make it, 100% whatever that containing block size is, but it doesn't know how tall to make it. So it sort of makes it zero pixels tall to start with. And this is creating that jank problem again. Now there is a solution for this. And if you go into Firefox Nightly right now, you can see it working in action. Here we are, the exact same example, and I hit refresh and the browser knows how big to make the image, even if the image hasn't loaded yet. It figures that out from the HTML here. It takes the width, it takes the height, and now, even though that width actual pixel number and that height actual pixel number are no longer gonna be true because CSS is making the image be a different size, the browser takes those two numbers 
it turns them into an aspect ratio, and then it uses that aspect ratio on the very first time it calculates the page. It works today in Firefox 71, in Firefox Nightly, and it probably is going to ship in Firefox Release when 71 releases on December 3rd, 2019. This is a thing that folks at Mozilla, we at Mozilla, we were, we, we've been working on an aspect ratio property for CSS that will be super handy for doing things like resizing iframes and videos that come in through iframes, and then we'd no longer have to use JavaScript to handle that kind of stuff. We'd be able to say, maybe even make any sort of a div, give a div or any element, an aspect ratio, and say, I want this particular element to be a square or to be a square if it can be, if there's more content, then go ahead and make it be taller than that. Uh, that aspect ratio CSS property is going to be pretty cool. In the process of coming up with that CSS property, talking to browser engineers as I was working on the spec and Elika Entomad was working on the spec and we were talking to Emilio and a bunch of the other people it's, uh, at Mozilla who work on the CSS working group, it occurred to us that we could use those ideas that we were discussing to change the way that the browser interprets the width and the height attributes and uses them uh, in painting the page. So we just went ahead and shipped that. We're doing that first. So basically the moral of the story is, hey, if you've been taking the width and the height attributes off of your CMS, off of your HTML, not publishing them, um, put them back. Or if you've never had them, put them on there. Lots of times the robots go ahead and generate this content anyway, these attributes for the HTML. We don't necessarily have to write them manually. You just set up your, your content management system or your build system or your whatever app so that it prints them out. Um, and it will then have a huge performance enhancement with Firefox 71 starting in December of 2019. Uh, Chrome, the Chrome team is also working on it. I think they might be shipping it uh, just after us, also in December of 2019. You can send it out today, though, early, ahead of time, and make sure, you know, test it, make sure it's going to work. A couple details to know about. One of them is that you're going to want to make sure that you have height auto in play here, or perhaps width auto, depending on how you have things set up. But, for instance, if you have width 100% on something, if you didn't have a width and height attribute, then you wouldn't need to say anything about the height. You could just go ahead and get away with that. But if we only have that and we do have a width and height attribute involved, then the, what the browser is going to do is it's going to use the height attribute to set the height of this image. So right now this image is set to be 500 pixels high, and then the width is being resized as 100%, which is making the image get all squished and constrained, and we don't want that. So we want to make sure that we have height auto on the image, so that when we resize the image, the height is is turned, it's like auto height, it's changing based on the width of the image and that the aspect ratio, the inherent shape of that image is always obeyed, it's always respected and the height will get changed by CSS just like the width does. So make sure you have height auto in things or like I said, if you are putting, maybe you're doing height 100% or height 50%, in which case you want to do width auto. But what if you're using responsive images? What if you've got multiple different files and those are being swapped out based on different conditions like the screen, whether it's a retina screen or a super retina screen or super duper high, whatever it's called these days, retina screen, or you have a bigger window or a smaller window, different types of viewport, different, there's all these new techniques for using multiple image files, right? So what do we do in that case? Well, if you're using image with source set like this, you don't need to worry so much about the fact that perhaps the image is going to switch from an image that's 375 by 250 to an image that's 750 by 500 to an image that's 1500 by 1000 because the aspect ratio for all three of those images is identical. It's always the same shape. It's the same kind of rectangle. It's not like you have a wide rectangle sometimes in a square, other times in a tall rectangle sometimes. It's always the exact same. It's always, I think this is, if you do the math, this is 1.5 to 1 aspect ratio for this particular image. And so saying width of 750 and height of 500 also calculates out to a 1.5 aspect ratio and it's fine. It doesn't really matter that the number of pixels is not the number of pixels. What matters is that the aspect ratio from this width and height is the aspect ratio 
for all of the images and you're good to go. So image source set, totally fine. Uh, and I believe it will work. I think it will uh, create in a performance enhancement just like this. Although go ahead and test it and see, you can try it out like I just did and see whether or not it's helping. The harder thing or the more complicated thing is, well, what if you are using responsive images to switch out different images that have different aspect ratios at different sizes of screen or different kinds of contexts? Uh, some people call that the art direction use case where maybe on a mobile screen, you want to have a square photo and on a big wide screen, you want to have a big wide photo. Um, yep, that's not going to do anything yet. We don't yet have a performance enhancement for that use case. Uh, we're debating right now in the specification world, discussing specs and options about what we should do. I'm hoping that what we'll do is we'll, we'll just have it be that we put um, width and height on our sources, on each source element, and then we can uh, have those height and width attributes swap out as things are, as the image file is swapping out. Cause that's basically what's happening right now is that this particular source gets swapped out for this particular source right here. So I think it'd be pretty cool if these width and height attributes go ahead and get swapped out for these width and height attributes right here. But I wanted to tell you this right away, let you know if you especially are working on an open source content management system, or if you have a bunch of websites with a whole bunch of different kinds of images and a lot of different robots running around posting images for people, you probably want to take a look at that and see what would it mean? What, how could you put the width and height batch attributes back in? Do you need to adjust your CSS at all and put in height auto, for example, in situations? Um, and go ahead and do that over the next couple months so that you get this performance benefit the moment that it ships in Firefox.